So um, I've recently joined the FN team where I'm basically doing developer relations. So I'm going uh, to different conference to meet up and so on, and I'm explaining what FN is. Cool. So you had a session, actually a hands-on lab, and also a session about uh, Project FN. That's correct. Very high level, FN is basically a fast platform, so a function as a service platform. Uh, it has key elements. Uh, for example, FN is open source, so that's something which is quite important for us. At some point in time, Oracle will use FN as the basis for Oracle Cloud Function, so we will have at some point in time a managed uh, version of FN. But given that uh, it's open source, anybody can take FN and run it on premises or on a different cloud provider. Okay, so it's not in not even specifically t on Oracle platform. Basically. No, it's an open source project. Right. Obviously, Oracle is heavily contributing that project, but we also have external contributors. Cool. So one of the things that we are based uh, FN on is uh, in FN basically a function. So a fast platform is a, it bas is basically a function as a service platform. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a platform on which you develop function and those function will be run on top of that platform. And one of the key aspects of FN is the fact that under the hood we are using container, we are using Docker uh, to host those functions. So basically, uh, with any fast platform, there are two types of roles. There's the developer role, so it's typically a user that will write function and that user will deploy its function on top of a fast platform. So given that everything is uh, based on Docker, uh, what we do, we provide a tooling with FN to basically turn any kind, any type of code like Java code or c Go code into a Docker image that will be run on top of the platform. Okay. And so that's the polyglot nature of FN. So out of the box, FN support a Java function, Go function, a Python function, JavaScript function, and a few others. And given that it's open source and given that it's based on uh, basically on Docker image, one can easily have support for other language. And in fact, I did that a few weeks ago to learn how it works. So I have had it support for Kotlin. Uh, so the Kotlin language, I've had it support for that uh, in FN. And it's very, easy to it's very easy to do. Basically, you need to know how to compile an artifact. So basically, how to turn a Kotlin code uh, into uh, something that will be run. And you know how to run that artifact. I see. And then you just need to tell FN basically how to wrap that as a Docker image. So it's something that, that is very easy to do, very easy to do. So one can easily have support for any type of language uh, on top of FN. So when we talk about the FN platform, so what are really like the components that uh, people can access? Uh okay, so let me use this slide. So I know you have a super slide that <laughs> explains everything, the architecture. So this is a very high level view of the architecture, but most of the time I tend to skip that architecture because if you are going, if you are going to use FN, remember that you would be a developer. So you mm -hmm. don't necessarily need to know what's behind uh, that architecture. But in a nutshell, there are two very big important components. That's FN server, so that's basically where your function will be hosted and run. And then given that we want to scale, uh, we need to make sure that in the platform there are multiple FN servers. So if you have multiple FN server, obviously you need to have uh, to add a front uh, load balancer to basically distribute intelligently the request to the uh, various FN server that you have. So that's in a nutshell the architecture. But again, you most of the time you will not really see the architecture, but you will just consume the architecture. What you will really uh, use with FN is the CLI. So the FN CLI is basically your gateway to FN. So that's a tool that uh, that's a common line tool that a developer will use to create functions. So there, for example, you do an FN init and you will have f your function bootstrap very easily. So you will have something that you can use right away and you will extend that function. You can use the CLI to test the function. We're talking about unit testing of a function. You will use the CLI to run the function. So you have the ability to run the function locally. That's another way of testing your function. And you will also use the CLI to deploy your function on the architecture, so on the various FN server. So that's basically something that, so everything will be done through the CLI. That's really the main entry point to FN. And then we also provide FDKs, Function Development Kits, which are um, used to develop function. So the FDK is basically providing extra capabilities that simplify the development of function, for example, in Java or in Go. So for example, in Java, what we provide through the FDK is, uh, well, for testing in Java, uh, the FDK is basically having support for GUnit. The idea is that FN 
is very, is very much developer focused. So we want to provide the developer the right tool. So if you are talking about unit test in ja to a Java developers, you want to provide him the tool that he or she used today, mostly GUnit. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's provided by the, the FDK. The FDK also provides things like, for example, um, you want to just work with Java code, plain Java code, but obviously uh, if you have multiple functions, you want to exchange information between your function, you will do that through JSON. And the marshalling and unmarshalling from JSON document to and from a Java object will be provided by the platform through the Java FDK. And then there are a few uh, additional capabilities that are provided by the FDK, including FNflow. FNflow is this idea that so by nature, functions are um, short-lived. So you will trigger a function, you will invoke a function, and that function will run for 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, maybe one or two seconds if it's a computing uh, intensive function. So given that functions are very short-lived, you need to make sure that they are stateless. That's really the only way we can scale, right? So that means that if you need to hold some kind of state, you need to hold that state outside of the function. Having said that, there are use cases where it makes sense to hold the state within a function. And that is typically when you want to compose together multiple functions. And that's something that has been discussed this morning during the keynote. So just imagine this. You have a function that will invoke another function in an asynchronous fashion because we need to scale, we don't want to block. Once we have the result of that function invocation, the main function will maybe invoke another function or or a different function. And basically, the, so you have this main function that will have some kind of the ability to chain multiple function execution. So kind yeah. of pipeline execution of different function. If you want to do that, you need to hold the state within your main function. And that's something that you can do using FNflow. And the nice thing with FNflow is that, again, we want to talk to developers. So you want to provide the developers the tool that he or she used today. And if we're talking to Java developers, we want to provide them a Java API to do that. And that's basically what Eventflow is about. I see. Okay, so that's a good overview of uh, the the project. Now, so th there are all those possibilities of deploying or creating um, an application, yep. right? Th that you can deploy in the, on you the. You can cr you can create functions. Now right. you you can so compose together multiple functions to create an application, and that's where okay. you uh, you will use Eventflow. Okay. So do you have like an example of uh, maybe or a use case or, or something that... Um so typically for function we're talking about, well, there are two types of function. Uh, synchronous function, so basically we send something and we expect to have some result back uh, from the function. And we also have, syn uh, sorry, asynchronous function. So basically we trigger the function, it the function do something, but we never had the res we we, we don't expect to have the result. So it's a kind of fire and Same. forget approach. But as you see, that function will provide some results. For example, it will send a mail, or it will trigger another function, or it will push I it will put some result in a cache or whatever. Uh, those functions are mostly event driven. So there is an incoming event, and we trigger the function, right? Um, with FN flow, we can evolve towards functions which are more kind of I would say complex first function or more or less applications. Like, uh, for example, you want to uh, book, uh, so you want to book a trip. That's th that's an example that I've used in my in my uh, in my session today. So mm -hmm. this would be the example. So you have on, on the middle you have a bunch of functions. So you have a function to book a flight. You have a, a function to cancel a flight booking. You have a function to book an hotel, and so on and so on. Right. And uh, what you will do with the, uh, the uh, Java FDK and FNflow, you will write that Hubber uh, trip booking function that will basically uh, compose together those multiple uh, functions. So for anything that is event driven, functions are very good candidates, like the one in the middle. So we have, we have received a request to book a flight. That's just an event. So we, we have received that event. We need to book a flight. But for s something which is more advanced, like we want to book not only a flight, but we want to book an hotel, we want to book a car, and so on, then it might be a good idea to use more flow to do that. Okay. And so they were each would be a different function then? Yep. Okay. So, and you then have like, um, you wanted to show a little bit like the tool and uh, how yep. the... Something that I will oh just add sure. regarding FN flow is that, and it's really the polyglot, the polyglot nature of uh, FN. So you see that the trip booking function would be the function that will use flow. So it will yep. be the Hubble function that will consume multiple backend functions. 
But you, as you see uh, here, we have a function to book the flight that is written in Java. We have a function mm. that is used to book an hotel that is written in Ruby, and so on and so on. It doesn't matter. I'm consuming all those functions from the FNflow API on the Java side. So that's one of the benefits of uh, FNflow, and that's one of the other benefits of the polyglot nature of FN. So maybe I can very quickly show you the FN CLI, how it works. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a function. Okay. Right? So fn init. Then we need to specify which runtime we want to use. And given that we are coming from Java, we'll create a Java function. Yes, please. And it's it's called Duke. So if I look there, what has been created, so we have a source directory, we have a func.yaml, which is just which just contains some metadata for my function, and we have a pom.xml. So basically what we have created here is just a Maven project that I can um, open in my ID. So uh, let's see. Uh, so you see it's a standard Maven. I can check the source. So what I have here, I have my function, which is just an hello world function. But as you can see, it's, ju it's pure Java code. So we have one class with one method. Right now, my f my method it's, is my function, so it get a string and it as in, in input, and it produce a string in output. Obviously, I can change that, but there is no interface. There is no th no FN specific features that leak through the, the code. It's pure Java code. Um, what else do we have? So, if we look in the source, we have a GUnit test that has been created for us. So, what I can do? Again, I'm a Java de developer, so I want to use the tool that I'm already using. Uh, obviously, I need to be in the right directory. So I can test my function using Maven, Maven test. So right now, what happened behind the scenes, my function is being turned into a Docker image, and it's being used to test my function. Okay. I can run my function. And uh, I will show you maybe using verbos. So we, s we can see that. Indeed, we are using Docker under the hood to create the function. And at the end, what we have here is the result of the function that is being run. It's being run locally on my Docker, right? What we want to do at the end is we want to deploy the function on an FN server. So we want to consume the function in the cloud. So to do that, we need to deploy the function. Uh, let's see, deploy, we'll call that in a um, Paris uh, application, and that's the yeah, sorry. We are in the middle of, of changing the command, so I'm all still a bit confused. So uh, I need to specify an app, and I need to specify a function. So I'm going to use the local one. So what I've created here by specifying app is basically I'm just telling to FN to deploy my function within the Paris app. An application in that context is just a grouping of functions. Now, if I look at the roots that I have, so fn roots list, and then I specify, I need to specify the application. I see that the Paris application has one root, and it's basically an HTTP endpoint. So I can directly invoke through the network my function. So now I'm hitting an fn server that start a, a Docker container to run my function, and this is the result of my function. Kay. I can obviously uh, pass some payload, so Paris, for example. This time, I, well, let's call it again. So this is uh, the see this is the Paris app that I want to use, and uh, the Duke function. So this time again, I'm hitting the network, and you see that the result is a little bit different. So this is just a hello world, but basically it gives us a, a starting point to bas to write our function. This is for Java, but I, I could have done the same using uh, Go or something else. Cool. So you did, uh, you created the function, you deployed it, you tested it. I mean, so I created the function. I run it locally, so that's the mm -hmm. FN run. Yep. Uh, FN call is basically to invoke the function through its HTTP, through its HTTP endpoint. Okay. So deploying an FN server or uh, curling the function is the same. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so where can we find out more information? So let's go back to... Uh, Presentation? Yes. And I have a few resources. Yeah. 
So if there is one URL to remember, I would use the first one. That's the GitHub organization of FN project. Everything is there. That includes the FN, but also samples, tutorial, and so on. So if you just have to remember one URL, I would pick that one. That's really uh, where you can grab FN, install it, run it, and have uh, access to the tutorial and all the samples. OK, cool. Well, anything else? That's it? No, I, w I would just encourage people to check that, because right. I mean, it's it takes like, the only thing you need, basically, to use Docker locally, sorry, the only thing you need is to have Docker running locally. Once you have that, it's just a matter of one command to install FN and FN in it, and you have your first function ready so it's really, it's really nice. It's really right. cool. It's really easy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Really easy to get started. So people cool. should really check that out. Excellent. And it's really designed for developers. Yep. Because they can just Java use developers, but also Go developers, JavaScript developers, and so on and so on. So yes, any developers. Yeah, we are and they can even combine the langu I mean yep. different languages in the... Yeah, you can invoke a Java function from a JavaScript function yep. and so on. So I mean, That's amazing. we are really polyglot. Yes. Truly, probably, probably God. Thank you, David, for stopping by and for presenting FN Project. You're welcome. I think this will be very useful for the community. So yep. thank you. Thanks.